This is the Samsung Galaxy A55 disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there is less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a look at the glass backplate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off, so you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. There are 16 Phillips screws which need to be removed. So taking a look at the top plastic cover, we can see the NFC antenna drawn on it, which are these gray colored lines. On the other side, there's some graphite film top transfer heat. Now that we have access to the battery cable, we'll disconnect that first. At this point, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. This is the 32 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. Looking at the main board, there's a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 50 megapixel primary camera, and a 5 megapixel macro lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner. Looking at the other side, we can see the proximity sensor, the SIM and memory card reader, as well as a graphite pad to help transfer heat. Once the graphite pad has been peeled back, we can see thermal pads on top of these chips and the processor. And here's the speaker assembly.
This flex cable connects the main board to the subboard as well as the screen cable. And this one also connects the subboard to the main board. If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the speaker assembly and the speaker assembly itself. You disconnect the flex cable which connects the screen to the main board as well as the subboard. You then peel off the flex cable for the screen from the midframe. Heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. Pry the old screen off. Apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe. And reassemble the phone. There are two Phillips screws which are holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard, we can see the primary microphone located here, next to the charger port. Here's a look at the other side, and we can also see a rubber gasket around the charger port. There are also rubber gaskets and mesh filters over the speaker opening on the frame, as well as the microphone openings. And for anyone who's worried about accidentally puncturing the microphone by inserting the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, on this phone you don't need to worry, since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the hole, so they won't get damaged. The vibrator motor is located here, and next to that is the fingerprint sensor, both of which are held down with some adhesive. If you need to replace those, just heat them up and pry them off. Moving on to the battery. There's a pull pouch provided to help you pry the battery off. Here's the 5000 mAh battery. Once the adhesive pull pouch has been peeled back, we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. The flex cable for the power button and volume key is located over here, and that can be replaced by prying the flex cable off the frame and pulling out the metal bracket from inside of the frame. Here's a better look. As for the physical buttons, those can be removed by pulling them out of the frame. And finally, the earpiece speaker is located on top, which is held on with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and pry it off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.